Hello, everyone. Welcome to Facebook Live with Mel Raposo. I appreciate you guys all joining in. Today is Wednesday, June 26th. And um, hoping, uh, hey, Carol, we're going we're gonna to hang out for a minute or so just to um, welcome everybody on. I expect, uh, hey, Gladys, Ed, and Jason, I expect a lot of people on today. Um, Alan, aloha. Thanks for joining us. Um, Paul Pancho, Christian, and Jody. Aloha, you guys. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. I know we're going to get a lot of people on today because we're going to be discussing uh, what's happening out there in, in Hanapepe at the salt pond, at the salt beds and the salt pans. And uh, yesterday there was a planning commission public hearing, uh, which I attended uh, along with probably over 200 other people. Hey, Rosen. Oh, my gosh. These comments are, are flying. I, I might miss some of you guys. I apologize. I apologize. Um, we're going to Clayton, Bethany, Karen. Hey, Karen, I just uh, was chatting with you. Vaughn, Robert McCain, my good buddy. Aloha, you guys. Alfred, Billy, Kaneolani, long time no see. Uh, how come I wasn't at the council meeting? I did watch the council meeting. Um, and uh, happy to see that the resolution was done, Jody. Uh, you know, we got to put the, keep the pressure on the administration to pursue Waipoli. And uh, we'll have that discussion uh at a, at a, in a, on a future facebook live hey john brian tuning in from meno meno Moni, wisconsin another vacation all the way in wisconsin beautiful country out there uh my, my mom was at the mayo clinic i broke her out of the hospital one day and we drove aimlessly and we ended up in wisconsin and just it was beautiful beautiful country jimmy trujillo matt kavika robert betos Ray and Leah, Larry, Mr. Colo, or Miss Colo, Kahelani, sorry, Debbie, Kenny, Kehau, gosh, that's it, that's it, guys, that's why we do this, and there is Kule, thank you, Kule, and congratulations on uh, being granted the uh, intervener status, Eric, you will represent the people well, uh, Kule, thank you so much, thank you, guys. And I'm praying that this uh, internet stays true. I expect uh, some some very good discussion. Uh, uh, but I did want to dedicate today to have a discussion about about Salt Pond. And um, you know, we do this every Wednesday at 5:30. And I try to, you know, uh, uh, along with the topics that people text me or message me that they want to discuss. You know, if if I feel like there's something that I think the public should know, hey Jeffrey. Um, I, I want to share it, you know, again, this, this whole platform here, Facebook Live, uh, the sole purpose of this platform is to, is to share information. Um, hey, Debbie, and, and, you know, inform and educate. Napa, what's happening, buddy? What's happening? And, uh, you know, Mahina and Angie, thank you guys for joining us again. Uh, again, I, I expect a lot of people on today because I think this, this issue down at Hanapipi at the salt pans, uh, um the, the salt makers xavier and leo aloha clayton thank you guys for joining us thank you thank you i apologize if i miss some of you these things this thing scrolls pretty quick and uh you know patsy is usually my technical person that, that watches on her phone she's out shopping right now she had to go to foodland now because the traffic was light so she went out uh she'll be here shortly but anyway uh, again i just want to thank you guys ron ron all the way from texas awesome awesome Dad, Thomas Raposo, my pops, all the way from Washington. Marlene, Abigail Santos, great job yesterday, Abby. Woo, straight front of heart and to the point. Thank you very much. My sister, Sandy, all the way from Wailua. Karen, Leslie, Campaniano, good buddy, all the way from Oahu. Nice to see you, Leslie. Still waiting for that lunch, man. We ne we've never gone to lunch. We got to do it. Let's go. Ken Hughes, my new Facebook friend. Aloha. Julie Souza, again, thank you for being there uh, yesterday as well. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you were on there, uh, were there yesterday uh, at the Planning Commission meeting. I was so happy uh, to see so many kupuna, so many residents uh, that normally, hey, Joy, uh, they don't go to these hearings. They don't come out and testify. They're too busy. They're working or taking care of their families. Amber, aloha. Uh, but this issue is so important and so vital to, 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 to this island, 
Kaleo Perez, aloha. Amber, thank you for joining us. So important to the Hawaiian culture, to the native Hawaiians, to the salt makers, to this culture, this practice that has been going on for, for longer than any one of us have been here. Um, hey, Kirk, thank you for joining us. Roland, aloha, you guys. Uh, so it, it was so it was so nice. You know, I, I told myself after the election was done that I was going to stay away as best I could from from these meetings and from testifying. But um, hey, Diane, uh, when this issue came up in Kule, I read Kule's post, a very emotional post. Uh, you know, I felt that it was it was my duty as 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 a as a citizen, as a resident of this island, someone that's born and raised here. That I talked about yesterday, uh, when I when I went up to testify, I identified myself as Melvin Francis Raposo, the most non-Hawaiian name that they would hear all day. But growing up here, born and raised on this island, and every one of you, I know this is true. You were taught from a very young age, from as far back as you can remember, that the salt pans, the salt beds, that whole area was a sacred area. That in fact we were not to go in there unless we were invited. We were not to go mess around or touch anything uh, in there. That in fact, it was sacred. It was a practice that was reserved, the kuleyana of, of the salt makers and their families. It was passed on from generation to generation. And uh, Francis with an I, Jeffrey, Francis with an I. <laughs> uh, hey, Sonny and Wes and Layla, thank you guys. Um, now I felt compelled to go and at least testify in support um, to support all the salt makers that have families and, and, and the generations of families that ha, that uh, have, have continued that practice, that cultural practice, uh, the rituals down there and the, the, the sacredness of that spot. So, you know, like I testified yesterday, I left the cultural aspect uh, of A. Don and Mildred to, to the salt makers and the families of salt makers and to, and to the kupuna that uh, know much more about that. Lisa Moroski, how are you? Nice to see you. All the way from heaven knows where, someplace on the East Coast, I think. Uh, anyway, but nice to see you, Lisa. Thank you. Haunani, uh, thank you yes, for yesterday as well. I mean, I, I just, again, there's so many of you on this on this session that, that were there yesterday. And, and for those of you that weren't there, I'm sure there were many of you that were there in spirit, in support of the salt makers and more importantly the, the practice this cultural practice so anyway um as i testified i was going to leave the cultural uh aspect uh, to 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 those families and the salt makers what i wanted to focus on and what i'm going to focus on today because i think we can get caught up in the emotion we can we can we can really get caught up in 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 in, in this battle but what i wanted to do is is really inform and educate the the people, the general public, and I'm hoping that you all share this video or this Facebook Live. I think you can do it right now. I don't do good with this stuff, but I believe there's a way you can share it right now so everyone can see this because I think it's important that the public understand uh, what is actually going on as far as the Planning Commission is concerned. You know, the Planning the Department did a, uh, a report that was submitted to the Planning Commission yesterday. It's, a, it's called a director's report. And in it is, is all what the Planning Department found as they were uh, reviewing the application of the, the applicant, which is Maverick helicopters or Smoky Mountain helicopters. Hey, Raleigh and Darlene, how's it going? So but so what I wanted to do, and it, it, it may, we may take a while, and, and I hope you guys can stay on. I hope, I hope my internet stays on. But I wanted to go over what the director report, the director's report showed, what it revealed. Hey, Rory and Chad, thank you for joining us. I wanted to go step by step so that people understand exactly what is going on out there. Because, hey, Pilani, aloha. It's very evident and obvious for anybody that lives here, born and raised here, anyone to understand that it's just wrong to threaten the bids. It's it's just wrong to do anything in that area that would threaten the salt making process. And let, let me give you a little back a little bit of background. You know, I, I first got elected in 2002. Um, and I believe in 2004, it was still my first term 
you know, I was, hey, Emily, we were contact. I was contacted by the uh, Santos family that they were experiencing some problems out there. Hey, Michael Drake, how are you? Uh, Sean Bobilis and Thomas Sherman. Anyway, uh, so at then, that time, the, the council chair was Kaipo Singh. So Kaipo and I went down. I had my video camera, that old VHS C or whatever it was, and which I, you know, I try to recover the tape and I can't. Unfortunately, hey Sherry, thanks for being there yesterday as well. But we went down and, and took a look at the pans, and what we found was was horrific. What occurred was we, we found oil droplets in the salt beds. We found oil droplets in the water in these beds. Um, I am not an expert in salt making by any stretch, uh, but hey Matt, good job today. But we saw what we saw come to find out what had happened was back then the uh the mayor's office uh the late brian baptiste his office had a had a, had a, re a complaint basically about the the potholes in the road that led to the beach so he contacted the base yard they came down and they filled the potholes with all the old asphalt material which created the oil in there to go through the ground into the into the aquifer into the into the water and feed into the the beds hey peter hey sherry how's it i'm good the reason i bring this up is because i don't want to hear anybody tell me hey garrett to harrow i'm going to take a break right here because i just want to offer our condolences to garrett you know I, I meant to start off this uh this uh session and I, and I and i and i apologize i meant to start off but i'm glad you're on garrett but i just wanted to offer our condo condolences and i think i speak for everyone here uh we got 61 people on right now and I, and, I, and this whole island uh garrett uh sends our prayers and condolences uh to your family um gosh uh you know we spoke the other day and i I just want to say, Garrett, we love you. We love your family, and uh, you know we continue to pray for uh, for y'all. I gotta stop there, Garrett, but uh, we love you, buddy. Okay, Paul, thank you for joining us. Um, so, so I don't want anybody telling me that there is no impact to the beds. I've I've seen it with my own eyes. Who would imagine that asphalt being placed on potholes on a road far from the beds would create oil into the ground or, or put oil into the ground and send it to the beds uh, it happened I had video of it I don't anymore and a hey, Kanepa thank you for joining us from that moment on though I knew that we need to protect that area now I told Kaipo right away, what can we do? There was already a special treatment layer placed on the, 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 the bed. So there was no way we could have any development uh, in the areas of the bed. But what we didn't have control of, hey, Randy, Nelson, Chad, Eugene, thank you guys, thank you guys. What we didn't have control of was, was the, the, the field, the airfield. And it's not an airport. I don't want to hear it being called an airport. It is not an airport. It is an airfield that was built during the war. So this was never intended to be an airport, a commercial airport. So anyway, so that was in 2004. And, you know, I, as I had, our council staff is the best. I, I sent a request and they provided all the documentation. You know, we had hundreds and hundreds of discussions regarding salt ponds over the 14 years that I was there. Norman, Dagmar. But in 2014, uh, council member, council chair at the time, Ajay Fofaro and I, we introduced a money bill we put $90,000 in the budget for the administration at the time to do a geological study because I knew there was a connection and there were impacts from the vehicles and from, from the activity. And I wanted scientific proof. So we put the money in the budget and we waited. And, you know, I remember I got, in fact, I got all the communications. Council member Fafaro, Jay, sent a second reminder, a third reminder. Finally, we got a response saying, that the administration, even though they had crafted the contract and they were going to have the University of Hawaii do the study, uh, 
the administration at that time decided that they were going to just talk. Hey, Terry and Bobby, hold on, guys. Marie, Kimo Rosen, thank you, guys. That they were going to meet with the salt makers to find out if it was okay or whatever the case was. Bottom line is this. The money lapsed. The study was never done. And it's unfortunate. So I guess my point, hey, Jocelyn and Teddy, aloha. My point is this. This is not a new issue. This issue has been around. Those salt makers have been fighting and fighting and fighting for decades. And this is an opportunity now, now for this county, through its administration and its planning department, to do the right thing. Now, I will say this before I get started, because I'm going to go over the director's report. And I got notes, so I I'll apologize in advance because I'll be looking down at my notes because I don't want to get sidetracked. I do not want to get sidetracked. But I think this is important information. I, I do want to say that, hey, Mark, the planning department should be commended for an excellent director's report. Jody Galitano uh, did, the, did the report. Uh, Kaina Hall signed it, approved it, and, it, and that's what went across to the commission, which is why we had the public hearing yesterday. So I wanted to go through that director's report step by step so that people understand it's not just about a company that wants to expand it goes way beyond that because now we're talking about environment we're talking about cultural practices which for me is, is much more important you know the native hawaiians have lost so much of their culture and we have an opportunity now and i thank Ule and the and all the families out there that that got the word out got people interested got people informed so we can actually stand up uh this would have never happened if you supported 2491 you act oblivious but you're not i don't see what that has to do christy but you're entitled to your opinion you know we're talking about salt pond today we're not talking about 2491 uh you know we can have that discussion later anyway i i wanted the people to understand that the planning department did an excellent job. They identified all of the shortcomings. They identified all of the problems. And that's in the commission's hands now. So I'm just going to start real quick. So the, this is the deal. Maverick helicopters or Smoky Mountain helicopters uh, request are, are basically requesting after the fact permits. They're not asking for permits to expand. They're asking for after the fact permits on, on structures and uses that they are already doing and they've already built. This is not about a new company coming in wanting to expand and going down the right way. No, this is a company, for whatever reason, is now seeking after the fact permits. Um, they're asking for permits after the fact per, per, <laughs> permits, I'm getting all upset, for restroom facilities that were already built that's illegally connected to a cesspool it's already done already done illegally they're asking for after the fact permits for a de detached structure to house their compressor already built they want an after the fact permit for placement of a 12 foot by 56 foot mobile office trailer that would replace or that replace an 8 by 40 container or trailer and they want to they've moved that eight by four uh trailer somewhere else so they're asking for a permit an after the fact permit hey russ and jason and they're also asking for an after the fact permit for an eight by four concrete generator pad for a propane gas tank okay this is what this discussion is about after the fact permits now the planning department identified several problems with the application number one a shoreline setback application needs to be done. That's required by state law. That was not submitted. Now, HRS or the Hawaii State uh, Hawaii Revised Statutes, which is a state law, states outdoor recreation concessions, which is what this is, are not permitted within a thousand yards of state ag, state ag and conservation land use districts or county residential and special treatment districts. This project falls within that thousand yard, uh, thousand yards of those districts. Hey, Priscilla, uh, Patricia. Um, 
It was not county approved. Absolutely not. Uh, the existing use cannot be considered to be legally non-conforming because there was never a public hearing for a use permit. So that's just the problems off, off the top with the application. There's also a problem with the Kauai County General Plan. Again, this is all coming from the director's report. This isn't hearsay. This isn't Mel Raposo's theory. This is coming right out of the director's report. The director, uh, the, the, the planner that did the report found that this project does not conform to the requirement to protect and restore cultural sites. It's not in compliance with the Kauai General Plan. Now, the applicant made these statements in his application. Number one, this project does not make any strategic infrastructure investments to the community. Absolutely not. He's correct. They're not doing anything that's going to benefit the community. It will not reduce the cost of living. It will not increase traffic or congestion. Will have negligible negative visual impacts. Now, this is all <laughs> subjective. It's not, it's not objective will have negligible negative visual impacts. It will provide an activity for visitors to see the island from a different perspective. I, I don't have a problem with that. Just right ne not next to a culturally protected area. Hey, Lena Allah and Carnation and Rodney. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Um, it is not located within or near any watershed areas. It will not contribute to any shift to clean energy. They're not utilizing any clean energy technology. Will have no substantial impacts on the salt makers or their salt beds. That one bugs me. Will have no impact on the public's access to streams, shoreline, trails, or wreck areas, or places associated with Hawaiian religious, cultural, or traditional practices. Oh, come on. Come on. Teresa. Johnny, Summer, aloha, will not provide for or diminish nurturing the young people of Kauai and will neither honor nor dishonor or discredit the kupuna of Kauai. You see, what these people are failing to recognize is that the impacts to these beds can, can potentially wipe them out. Tell me that's not going to have any kind of significance uh, or, or or affect the nurturing of our kupuna or our keiki. Now, come on. This one is very important. Environmental assessment is required. Environmental assessments, again, by state law, required for all new and expansion or modifications of existing helicopter facilities, specifically helicopter facilities. The county has determined that this is a modification and an expansion of the existing facilities. They've expanded. They've modified. They've, they've put up buildings. They've built concrete pads. They put a restroom. And the county has identified that. That's why I say kudos to the planning department and Jody Galitano for, for, you know, this is, I've seen so many planning director reports in my years and this one was the only one or, or one of a very few that was right on point. The applicant stated that they are not proposing new or expansion uh, or modifications of any helicopter facilities. They're, they're, hey, Betty, how are you? How are you? And I'm sorry because I'm going to have a rough time doing the comments. I'll, I'll respond to the comments after we get offline and, and you'll be able to see them because I want to really focus on this, uh, my notes here. The applicant states they're not expanding or modifying the facilities. They've already done it. So an EA is required, and they constructed those, uh, those modifications and improvements without an EA. Ilima, DC, and L. Aloha. So the county now is saying that the applicant must submit an EA prior to the planning commission taking any action on this permit. Leilani, uh, Leolani, aloha. So in other words, done. Done until they get these things done. Now, there's also a, a requirement for a use permit. 
which was never gotten. And a use permit may be granted only if the following are met. Number one, the applicant must justify compatible use. And, and the county in their report stated that this may be considered compatible, however, the applicant has not provided justification that the use is compatible with the historic and cultural salt pan operation. Good job, good job planning. Hit the nail on the head. And the reason why the applicant did not provide justification is because there is none. There is no justification to show that this use will not affect the salt pans. Number two on a use permit, they got to prove that there is no detriment to person or property. The department was very clear. The department is unable to establish compliance with this criteria. In other words, they are not they cannot establish that in fact the applicant is in compliance that they are not uh, causing a detriment to person or properties in the area in the third number three for use permit environment consequences without a required environmental assessment the department is unable to establish compliance at this time absolutely how can you make that determination without the environmental assessment remember they're saying they don't need one because it's, there's no modification or, or expansion and the county is saying, no, you do. Number four, consistency with the CZO and general plan. The department found, this is important, the depart, department found that the use is not compatible with the guidelines for the open zoning district. Yeah, Abby, I agree. They need an EIS. I think it starts with the EA. If they don't get a finding of uh, no significant impacts, they go to the, but bottom line, I agree with you. I, I agree with you. Uh, it should be an EIS, which would be the full Im impact statement. So the department found that the use is not compatible. They found that it's not compatible. So the use permit would not be granted even if they applied. Napa, if you don't have anything positive, they shut your mouth. <laughs> hey, thanks, Napa. Yeah, you know, I just ignore those people. You know, they're haters. They're haters, and you know, I, we got more. Uh, you know, we got more important things to do than listen to haters. Um, so that's the use permit section. Okay, now there's a SMA, special management area. Um, this one is a little little complicated because at the time of the application, the department was not aware of the condition that was in the prior SMA approval. There was a condition in, in there, condition six, that required an, uh, an SMA approval for any additional structures. So they allowed the SMA minor, I'm not gonna get into the details, I'm just, I'm just saying that the, the department failed to, uh, they were not aware of that condition. Well, they're aware now. So what's gonna happen is they gotta withdraw that old permit and they gotta refile because there are additional structures that were built. So an SMA, is a, a special management area permit is required and they would have to address the rec, uh, recreational resources the cultural and historic uh resources scenic resources coastal hazards as well as coastal ecosystems so they need to go through an sma process they need to go through the sma process that hasn't been done native hawaiian traditional and cultural rights is another part of the application. Well, they hired Mr. Leonard Kimokea Kapahulehua, a cultural practitioner who has stated his familiar uh, familiarity with the area and agreed that development will have no measurable effect on any known traditional or customary practices of native Hawaiians. Now, I have no idea who Mr. Kapahulehua is. Uh, I understand, in fact, the salt makers uh, responded that this guy no longer lives on Kauai and he basically failed to meet the requirements. How can a native Hawaiian cultural practitioner say there will be no measurable effect on any known traditional or customary practices of native Hawaiians? Hey, Sherry and Vivian. Um, I, I don't get it. Now, I know the game. You hire 
the person is going to say what you want to say. But I'm very disappointed in this gentleman, um, who I'm assuming is Native Hawaiian by his name. But, you know, again, I'm not Native Hawaiian. I don't have an ounce of Hawaiian. But we were taught from a very young age about the sacredness, as I stated earlier, uh, of that area. And, and, I, and I also stated that I saw the oil coming through the water in the bed. So please, please, um, I don't know what it takes to become a cultural practitioner, but you know, I, I, I suggest that this applicant, not, well, I'm not even gonna go there. I'm just saying, I don't believe that this guy's uh, report is accurate. I don't think it's valid and uh, neither does the planning department. So this is the department, the department's uh, requirements. Um, applicant, uh, I'm sorry. Number one, a new SMA permit. They have to go through the special management area permit process, which means they need to get a shoreline setback de uh, designation. They need to go through entire process. That needs to be done before the commission can even take action on this. And we'll get to what happens next in a little bit. They need to provide setback, lot coverage, parking requirements, building height and separation, separation information prior to any decision making of the, by the commission. They need to provide info on the number of tours, the days and hours of operation, the number of helicopters, in addition to the compa compatibility of the use. That is where I, I don't think it's possible. Hey, Wayne, let me see if I missed anybody. Sorry, guys. Vivian, okay, all right. They need to provide all of this information. They're not going to be able to provide the compatibility of the use, especially because of the 1,000-yard requirement. It's not a compatible use, and it cannot be... It, it cannot be a um, non-conforming use. That use is not allowed within a thousand yards of those special districts. Christy, aloha. Kolohe Kapu and Mariah, thank you for joining us. They need to adequately, <laughs> adequately address the impacts to historic resources identified in the general plan. They need to comply with the requirements for the open designation in the Hanapepe Ele Ele Development Plan. They need to do an environmental assessment. I would hope that this county will require them to do an environmental impact statement and not just the environmental assessment. And that, but this is the, the requirements of the county. Comply with the requirements for the, I'm sorry, an environmental assessment with a finding of no significant impact prior to commission actions. And, and I think we need to revisit that. I think we now need to put the pressure. A great job yesterday. And I think we got, you know, I got their attention, but we cannot stop. They need to provide outreach to satisfy the requirements of Native Hawaiian and traditional cultural rights. How is that going to happen? Hey, Philip, how is that going to happen? It's not going to happen. Because it's not compatible. And they got to get approval of a use permit. We already talked about that. We already talked about the use permit and the fact that um, it doesn't, it's not compatible. It, there is a potential detriment to the people and the property. There are environmental consequences, or at least we don't know, but they need to prove that there is no environmental con, uh, consequences. And the consistency with the C01 general plan, we've already determined that they're not in compliance with the, the Hanapepe LLA development plan as well as the general plan, as well as the CZO, the county zoning ordinance, the law. They're not in compliance. Hey, Darlin, Larry Moises, aloha. Thank you guys for joining us. So they came up with a preliminary conclusion and it said the application as submitted does not address the issues that, that I just discussed and the planning commission cannot take action without an environmental assessment. The, the department recommends that the application be denied or deferred until all issues are addressed by the applicant. You know, again, I, I cannot thank the planning department enough for doing what I believe is a, a very thorough, hey, Bernadette, um, a, a report. And now it's in the commission's hands. 
Um, they did vote yesterday on in, uh, 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 approving intervener status to Kule Santos and Malia Nobriga o Oliveira, president and vice president of Hui Hana Paakai o Hana Pepe. And, uh, you know, again, what that is is now Kule and Malia has a, has a voice. They have a seat at the table. They have a seat at the table, and, uh, and, and our voices will be heard through them. They are a part of the process. They don't only have three minutes anymore. You know, they're going to be at the table. They're going to be a functioning part of this process. Hey, Stacy, Dave, aloha. Let me see if I missed anybody else. Sorry again, like I said, I'm missing. I'm going to go back to the comments because I'm going to wrap up real shortly. So I'm going to go ahead and do the comments and answer what I can here while we go live. Um, so congratulations on that uh, to Kule and Malia. Um, that's, that's a huge step. You know, that's a huge step. So what happens next? I'm sure everybody's wondering, what's going to happen next? Um, I agree, Sherry. I believe we need to do an EIS. I, I do. But I also believe that that's just a non, not, not a compatible use, period. So I, And I'll get to what I, what I think should happen. The first thing that needs to happen is the county planning department and this administration needs to implement or administer the fines to this company. You see, they're operating without a permit, without legal permits. They, they have no permits. They're, they're admittedly, by applying for this permit, there, there's, no, there is, it's, there's no dispute. No dispute. Um, Jody, Gall oh, there's Jody. Oh, I'm glad you're on. I, I'm sorry, Jody, I didn't see. How about a big hand for Jody Ellison Galinato? Enforcement is going to happen. I love it. Thank you for joining us, Jody. Whew, I'm glad I said all good things about you. Uh, Marilyn, thank you. Kayla, Princess is here. John McFarlane. Um, thank you, Jody. I'm glad. I'm glad you clarified that. And you can, you know, I'm, I'm, thank you. So, so I, I'm, I'm hoping that the planning department is going to start administering these fines, and these fines should be significant. You know, we've been hearing a lot of talk lately from the council and from, from uh, the administration and planning about these $10,000 a day fines for TVRs. You know, I got to tell you, I don't like TVRs. But this, to me, is much more serious than a TVR violation. Much more. So if we're talking about $10,000 a day fines for TVRs, then this should be a 10... Ashley Nagaoka, oh, oh, oh now I'm going to be on the news then this should be a $10,000 a day fine. And we should not wait. Illegal structures, unpermitted structures, unpermitted restroom, illegal hookup to a cesspool. Cesspool! You cannot even build a cesspool anymore. So that's number one. Start the fining now. And if we can go retroactive, I'm not, I, I should have pulled the statute. But if we can go retroactive, we go retroactive. Number two, issue a cease and desist on the operations until compliance is met. No more tours. Sorry, take that helicopters, get them out of there, they will run them out of Lihue or Princeville. You know, Princeville has a beautiful airport, beautiful terminal, restrooms, all legal. Go over there and go pay Princeville Airport and run out of their place. Or go get a place in Lihue. The, the state's spending millions of dollars. They improved all those helipad areas and the, the, all kinds of stuff going on in Lihui. Go there. Unfortunately, John, we can only do 10. Hey, Dennis, Onishi, we can only, the maximum is 10000 a day. That was who we should be charging them. And those funds should be going back to the salt makers for all of the hassle they've been going through all these years, decades. So that's number two. The county needs to issue a season desist. They are operating in violation of the law. They don't have a use permit, no SMA permit, no building permit, no structure permit, no bathroom permit, no cesspool permit, nothing. They need to stop. And number three, this governor needs to start looking at removing all commercial activity from Burns Field. We need to remove commercial activity, period, from Burns Field. I understand the state gets money from these parachute companies and helicopter companies, but 
I don't think the 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 governor. I don't think many leaders today don't understand the significance of the paikai. I don't think they understand the importance of a cultural practice that is at risk. I don't think that these people understand. You know, they, they, you know, kalo, haloa. These things, the, the, the native Hawaiians have lost so much in, in the way of their culture. And we have an opportunity, and I said this yesterday at the meeting, we have an opportunity today to fix this wrong. And you do this by putting the, the, the focus and the priority on the salt makers and the salt beds that, that practice and the rituals, the sacredness of that area. I'll be honest, you know, Kaipo and I tried our best and we could do only so much up into that field. And while we have tried to get the, the state to hand that over to us so we could have control, they're not giving it up. We need to, we need to end commercial activity because the threat is real. And I talked to you guys, for those of you that came on late, I talked to you guys about the oil that I saw with these eyes in the pan, in the bed. In the in the salt pan in the water it's real we cannot relocate these pans we cannot go go buy land and recreate and build this this is this was made by God by mother nature and, and it's a kuleana of the, the salt maker and uh, salt making families generation after generation after generation for us to pretend and to stall and to say well you know no 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 we need to issue those fines ten thousand dollars a day and if this company can afford it so be it cease and desist they cannot operate i'm sorry we would you know my last comment yesterday at the uh, the Planning Commission public hearing, I asked those commissioners, what would happen if any one of us normal, regular people sitting in here today, there's over 200 people, maybe even 300. I think if you count everybody that came and left or whatever, there's a lot of people. What would you? What would happen if, if any one of us normal people, regular people, not businessmen, not corporate giants, just regular, everyday, tax-paying, struggling, poor families. What if one of us built an illegal structure in our yard, put a bathroom without a permit, and started a business? What would happen? I answered my own question by saying, I know one thing, we would be suffering the wrath of the planning department. We go after our TVRs. We've issued fines. We've collected. This is much more of a priority than a vacation rental. This is much more important, much more of a priority than somebody that has a, an extra dwelling or a shed in their backyard. So my, my only hope and 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 Jody, if you're on again, you know, I I hope that the planning department did their job up to this point. It's in the commission's hands. But now the department needs to put their foot down and they need to go after these guys. Either come in compliance or pay the price. Now, the other option is for this company to withdraw their permit applications and pack up and leave. But that doesn't solve the entire problem because that whole area has been modified and they need to restore that area back to what it was pre-construction, pre-modification, or pre-expansion. That's what they got to do. And this county needs to assure that that is happen that 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 is done because we just got too much to lose. 
the cultural practice out there at Salt Pond, those salt makers and their families and the generations that they have carried this tradition and these rituals and this practice should be, needs to be, the utmost priority of this county right now. I'm going to try to get through some of these comments. Um, yeah, I thought we were going to take the whole hour, but that, that that's it. Again, you know, my comments, it's not hearsay. Those comments aren't what someone told me. They come out of right here. This comes right here. Planning and Jody's on the on this session. The planner that wrote this report did a heck of a job. Now the planning department needs to follow through. And the planning commission needs to follow through. This is, this is not over. And let me tell you what, this company's got some high-powered attorneys that's going to fight it. Fight. Because I don't think there's a jury in this country that's going to stand up against the salt makers and their families. Okay, thank you guys. I'm going to go through some of these comments. Sorry, guys. There's there's just a ton. Um, I don't know how far back I can scroll. Uh, let's see. What is the mayor doing about it? I don't know. Um, he was at the meeting yesterday. He didn't testify, so I'm not sure. Uh, at the upside can can be another upper. And the upside can be another operator. I'm not sure what that means. Responding to the whole on here, DLR needs to step in. Um, need to stop the abuse. It's more than just salt. It's a practice and a way of life. It's our self determination and our identity of who we are and why. Yeah, exactly, Sherry. That's what I've been trying to say. You say it much better. Um, Jody, yes, I take my kuleana seriously. Thank you very much. Again, Jody, you're the bomb. Um, oil, need stop vehicles from traveling between the salt beds and the airfield. Absolutely. You know, uh, I know that, you know, and that's, again, the, the hypocrisy of some of the people that's going to say, no, 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 we don't want the helicopter, but the cars are okay. Listen, when I, back in 02, I mean 04, I, I tried to get Kaipo to introduce a bill. I wanted to introduce a bill to take those cars out of there. There should be no vehicles in that area. That's why the geological study needed to be done so we could determine where and, and what and how did that oil get in. And But you're right. There, there should be no vehicles on there. So it's kind of hypocritical to say, hey, no helicopters, no, but it's okay to have all those vehicles every day dripping oil and gas and stuff into the ground. So I agree, El. I know people are going to hate me for that, but I'm real. I'm real. You, you want to protect those salt beds. Uh oh, I think I lost connection. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me, everybody? <laughs> 